Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorr and in today's video we are talking about four different patterns, subtypes for the INFJ. So if you're an INFJ, use this video to find out which of these subtypes you are in the most, what you tap on the most. Are you an INFJ that has come to rely more on your feeling and judging function or an INFJ that has come to rely more on your introverted and intuitive function? I personally am the fir former, not the latter. I revolve a lot on my feeling judging function so much in fact that it sometimes overwhelms me and I want to talk about what happens with these subtypes what their goal is what their role is and how we can ensure that we use them in a way that is healthy now listen up let's listen up we are in less than a week we're gonna hit 2,000 subscribers and 2,000 subscribers holy hell that's two zero 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 zero. No, wait, not that much. Zero two thousand people. That's so much. I can't believe it. Seriously, what are you guys doing here? Why are you guys here? I don't get it. To be honest, it's just me, right? <laughs> At least that's what I was thinking. So maybe it's time that we start building a better community for each other. So I started up a Discord channel, a chat room, a forum of sorts, uh, one of the best ones out there. Better than Facebook, better than Skype, better than any of the alternatives. So use this chat room, navigate the different topics I set up, ask for and request new topics if you want any. Because this is a chat room for psychology, for typology, for Carl Jung, for the different intelligences, for HS peace for introverts extroverts for the MBTI for anyone who's interested in learning more about themselves the Enneagram or any of the different typologies okay maybe not socionics and beyond that let me know if there's anything I should do at 2,000 subscribers if there are any cool things you would like to see at 2,000 subscribers what should I do next week you guys help me decide for now let's start exploring the INFJ's four subtypes if you are an introvert, an intuitive, a feeling and a judging type, that means that is your flow code. If you build on these habits, if you support yourself in being this kind of a person, you'll become happier, healthier, you'll become more functionally aware, you'll become smarter, you'll think faster, and you will grow yourself in so many ways. Learning about yourself, learning to be true to yourself is core, key really, if you want to grow. When you are in the INFJ mode, in the flow type, the INFJ flow type, in the hero state, you are making choices that will make your life better in the long run. You're acting in a way that is true to what you feel is right, to what centers you, what calms you, what gives you a sense of trust in yourself, what gives you a sense of a feeling of importance in what you do. And if you go more towards extroversion, towards sensing, towards thinking, towards perceiving, what you will notice is you'll become not just more critical and more negative, less positive overall, you will also find yourself having less energy, feeling like life is draining you and that you are losing energy and that you are lacking something. It will also take off, cut you off from that thing that makes you feel motivated. You'll start wondering what the point is, why are you doing what you're doing, what the bigger meaning of it all is. And finally, if you cut off your perceiving, if you cut off and go into perceiving, if what happens is you become more stressed, more distracted, and you find yourself lacking that time to work on your key goals, your key passions in life. So the subtypes paint the picture of what can happen to an INFJ who loses their course, momentarily, sometimes for good reason. There is the hero, there is the mentor, there is the sidekick, and there is the rival. These are the four subtypes. The hero represents the mature adult, the healthy, growing person. The mentor represents the critical parent, the person that looks at you from that critical perspective and says, this is what you need to improve on and work on. The child is your sense of humor, what you find fun, your passion, what gives you energy, but also your obligations to other people, the things you do out of a sense of work or because someone else told you to do it, not because you wanted to do it. The rival represents your lost defense, your crisis mode, your crisis response, how you act when you feel pressured by other people. So looking at things more closely, we will either start to resemble more... ESFJs 
or INTPs or at their worst ESTPs. It is when an INFJ goes into extroversion that their whole demeanor, their whole perspective on themselves becomes much more critical. The INFJ in the mentor state suddenly becomes aware of how awkward they are, how inappropriate they are. They become suddenly aware of what everyone else thinks about them. They start judging themselves from what other people want. The INFJ in the ESFJ mode is pushing themselves so hard to live up to other people's expectations. They always want to be loved by other people. They always want to have everyone's support in everything they do. So the INFJ in this mode imagines and starts talking about how other people judge them. In the grip of this critical parent, suddenly everything the INFJ thinks about themselves comes from this perspective of negative views other people might have on them. But beyond that, the INFJ in this mode is overwhelmed in extroversion and in sensing. Sensing because they are doing things that are taxing them, things that take energy from them. They are doing things that are overwhelming them, and often they neglect their own boundaries. The INFJ in this mode is in many ways in a warrior mode. They are pushing themselves out, they are pushing themselves to the limax, to, to the limits, to live up to an honor other outer obligation. And so the INFJ judges themselves purely on what the stage, what the people, what the audience, what nature, what other people think about them. Their whole perspective on themselves is based on this outer world. And what got them here to begin with was that desire to do something good for others. They wanted to make a contribution. They wanted to do something to help the world. They wanted to guide and to make a difference. They wanted to have a positive impact on other people. But maybe sometimes, some way on the, on, the, on the journey there, the INFJ started forgetting why they did it. Other people started demanding things from them. They came in, wanted to help, do something good for others. But then other people joined the hand away from them and said... And then you go here, and then we need to go here, and then we need to go here. And the good intention INFJ here, in the ESFJ mode, forgets to set energy boundaries for themselves. Forgets to say, sorry guys, but I need time to myself. I need time to meditate, to relax, to find my perspective. I can't act and do things just because other people are por forcing me to do it. I have to do it in my own way. And finding balance between that desire to help other people without being burdened by the obligations that other people put on you while you are in the process of helping others, that is such a difficult journey for the INFJ. And that's also why so many INFJs can face burnout from imagining and often perceiving wrongly, especially, that other people will hate them or dislike them or cut them off if they do not live up to and other other people's wishes. Ever so often it's about finding trust and to finding your center, to finding your own perspective and to trusting and walking your own journey. That is the way to releasing the stress and getting back the energy that you lost while pouring yourself out into other people. Now on the other hand of this video I see a ton of INTP like INFJs. INFJs that are much more towards following their passion, who have a sort of source of passion, who are good at managing their energy and that have a strong sense of self, a strong sense of uh, who I am, what my journey is. But there are issues here, key issues on these INFJs need to deal with. This is the slightly obsessive INFJ in many ways because this INFJ can be pouring themselves into a theoretical pursuit, into a philosophy that is often in many ways completely impractical or pointless to the general populace. This is the INFJ that risks getting cut into pure theory with no practical implementations whatsoever. And this is the INFJ that struggles the most with isolation. Now, what drives an INFJ to become more like an INTP is the experience of stress. Stress from work, stress from life in general, stress from the things you don't feel good enough at. So every so often the INFJ pulls away from the world because they feel like they aren't good enough to be there. They don't, can't handle it, can't handle expectations, can't handle the stress. So... This is the sidekick mode, this is the mode of an INFJ student in learning. 
It's the mode of an INFJ who is exploring a passion or something they find fun and something that gives energy. They are like actively releasing anything that can drain their energy, releasing distractions, releasing sensory stress, avoiding parties, isolating themselves in all kinds of ways. But also, they are in so many ways lacking that important core motivation. Because they feel cut off from helping other people and cut off from that search of the true essence of things. What makes a person good, what makes a person valuable. Because they are so preoccupied with improving themselves or working on themselves or perfecting themselves. Criti they criticize themselves from this perspective, this laziness uh, that kind of cuts them off from others even more. The INFJ might tell themselves, I can't go to a party until I have mastered this or this task, or until I've become good at this or this ability, or until I have made a ma name for myself in this or this workplace. Under stress, the INFJ can become so caught up with proving themselves to others by coming up with unique theories, by coming up with unique perspectives, by being able to build up abilities that give them a sense of worth. But that sense of worth never comes because the INFJ doesn't value thinking to begin with. The search for perfecting yourself can become an infinity game for the INFJ because you keep on mastering or trying and trying to improve yourself but you never really find that sense of being a good person, of understanding yourself, of becoming more self-aware because your whole perspective is based on identifying weak spots and identifying things that somehow make you unfit to live or cope in reality. And because you feel unfit beyond that, you lose your introvert intuition. That's the most crazy part of this. You find yourself in so many ways becoming less proactive. You put yourself into all these kinds of small tasks, improving yourself with all these kinds of smaller things, but you never actually end up taking forward a new theory or doing something unique or original because in so many ways you feel blocked from it you don't feel ready yet and that's the kid's struggle the kid's struggle is getting that sense of self-worth or that sense of self-confidence that makes them feel ready for the world ready to manage the world's obligations so while the ESFJ can be pouring themselves into something, can be completely bound and controlled by outer obligations, the INTP is completely isolated. They serve nobody. They have nobody to serve. They have nothing to do. They have nothing original to contribute because they don't feel ready yet. They keep thinking, I need to think a little more until I feel ready to do it. And that's what the grip of introverted thinking is. That's why introverted thinking for an INFJ is a 13-year-old, because they will never go beyond being a 13-year-old. They will never get to that point of maturity that a normal, healthy adult has. So every so often, what the INFJ needs to be searching for is a true understanding of themselves and who they are, a non-critical, from a non-critical, from a non-mechanistic angle. An understanding that isn't based on what you're good at or what you're bad at, but what your unique worth, worth is, what your unique worth comes from, where you get your inspiration, where you get your energy, where you get your drive from, where you get your sense of meaning and value from. It is by finding this essence that the INFJ can center themselves, finding the energy, finding the passion, finding the motivation and finding the strength to move their boundaries forward. I keep on thinking the option is either INTP isolation or ESFJ workaholism, but then I find that the middle route is actually clarity, wisdom, insight, that perspective, that perspective uh, search for understanding, that search for self-love, for self-awareness, for true introspection. The INFJ needs to stop looking at themselves as machines and start looking at themselves as people. And the INFJ needs to make sure that they don't look at themselves purely from the perspective of others, but that they look from the, at themselves from the perspective of themselves. The INFJ needs to find a way to serve others by being unique, by being true to themselves. And the INFJs need to start identifying when they judge themselves purely based on their mechanical abilities, their skills or how much they know, or what other people think, what other people like, what other people want or expect from them. 
Learn to recognize that, hey, this is a judgment that I think that other people have about me. But it's not, so what is my judgment about myself? Learn to recognize the difference between when you judge yourself based on your mechanic properties or how skilled you are at something, and when you value yourself and study yourself based on who you are, what your goal and your purpose in life is. Learn to recognize when you are simply executing what you're seeing with your own eyes, with extroverted sensing. Learn to recognize what you see with your own mind's eye, what your theory says, what your instincts say. Discipline your mind towards a, your single purpose. Find your single path in life, your path, your unique way of being, your unique way of getting forward in life. Don't get distracted from that path. Don't put yourself in a situation where you keep on neglecting that path. Follow that path when you know it. Discipline your mind. Discipline your thoughts and your perspectives. Put yourself to some form of mental self-awareness. Become more aware of your thoughts and of your theories, your perspectives and your unique visions. Envision, actively envision what you are doing in your life and look at yourself from that bird's eye perspective. Let yourself detach and detachedly understand yourself, your life and who you are. Tune out from what your eyes tell you, from what your vision says, from what you can touch, smell or hear. And find that clarity and that center that intuition gives you. And now recognize the key other factors that can put an INFJ in these unhealthier personality states. What makes an INFJ fall more towards the INTP is school, feeling inferior to other people, feeling submissive, feeling like you are unable to trust yourself. What puts you towards the ESFJ state is that feeling that other people need you, that other people won't be able to make it without you, that you are the only person that can fix or make a big difference in other people's lives. And now make sure that when you are in these situations, you don't let yourself become controlled by it. You don't submit to it. You don't let yourself change who you are just to fit with it. INFJs can become unbelievably wise. INFJs can be helpers that move the society forward. INFJs can put on new perspectives on and original theories on the world. INFJs can change our awareness of the world and of each others. INFJs can reach goals that other people thought were impossible. Usually, the most healthy INFJs are the independent lone wolves that actively put themselves in the service of society. But never by submitting to society, but never by doing what the crowd says, but never by doing what everyone else expects of them. INFJs that are healthy look at the world from a perspective of idealism, from ideas, from the right to privacy, from integrity, from independence, from the right to follow your own path in life, from the right to do what you want to do regardless of what other people might think of you when you do it, from the authentic, authentic angle of being true to yourself, from the angle of wanting to help and give something to the world, from the angle of wanting to grow and reach new perspectives and new ex experiences, experiences that nobody has ever had before. And now, regardless if you sit here as a more isolated INTP-like INFJ, or if you come here sitting here like an ESFJ, find your way to flow, find your way to center, find your way to peace, find your way to being true to yourself. And let me know about your path about how you dealt with these things, how you overcome these challenges, these outer pressures, these outer expectations. Let me know in the comments field below because I am not done with this path myself. I am still working on all of these things. I'm still trying to find my way. And I am just exploring, I'm just beginning to map out this concept of subtypes. Hopefully we will learn more over time and we will be able to go even deeper. Anyways, I hope to see you all in the next video.